Hi everybody. This is a quilt camp surprise. I didn't make an announcement that I was going to go live tonight. I did not even know that I was going to until I decided to take a break from signing and book order fulfilling and then uh, found myself cutting some pieces and thought, well, shoot, I can just go live and I don't have to schedule it. I don't have to plan a big thing to do. I would just wanted to stop in and say hi and see how everybody else is doing. Do I have people joining me tonight? I hope so. I hope so. I hope that it's a good Monday night wherever you are. Um, oh, good. I see you coming in. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Um, we've got a lot of things going on with our Good Fortune mystery. And today was the release of um, our second Mystery Monday link up. So there are a bunch of you sharing your photos of your progress, be it just your fabric choices or maybe your units from part one, your units from part two, things that are, are being shared. I absolutely love it when those who blog join in because unlike just a Pinterest photo or an Instagram photo or whatever, you get to know a little bit more about what's going on with that person and their life. If you can read down their blog page, catch a few previous posts and find that we have so much in common. I'm hoping that um, the mystery this year is adding to your holiday season. It's going to be kicked into full gear here shortly if it hasn't already. You know, we were out to dinner just the other night and I made the comment to my husband that I did not even mind that the Christmas music was playing overhead. Uh, mind you, this restaurant listens to a station that I think that switches to Christmas Munich music just before Halloween or right after Halloween and all the way beyond from Halloween to Thanksgiving, we don't like to go there because the Christmas music is already blaring. But you know what? Once Thanksgiving is passed, they can blare that Christmas music all that they want. Um, I didn't plan on anything specific to talk to uh, you about tonight. But if you have any questions, I thought maybe we could get um, a, a conversation going. I can't read what's on the screen from right here as, as far as your Facebook questions and things go. But I can pick them up on my phone if you drop me an email at quiltcamtime at gmail.com. The screen is quite a ways away from me. I can't even reach the keyboard from here. And with my eyesight, reading what's scrolling by on my, my laptop, it is just a blur. So drop me an email. Share a photo of what you're working on. Let's get some conversation going tonight. Um, things that I'm working on. You know, I've, I've been signing books like crazy. Books came in on Thursday. Did you snag your a copy of String Frenzy yet? This is my brand new book with CNT Publishing. It's got 12 brand new glorious string quilts in it. All of them have a little story about how they came to be at the top of each pattern. And we've been running this in waves. Um, today we released wave three of 500 copies. So Black Friday, we did 500 copies. Then Cyber Monday, we did 500 copies. Then today we did another 500 copies and all three waves sold out in less than an hour and a half each. So my son Jeff and I have been busy signing books, stuffing envelopes, affixing postage, watching our postal person roll her eyes when she drives up to our front door to find that we've got another 12 tubs for her uh, to pick up. If you missed wave three, and we will be doing wave four. I'm giving you advance notice on Friday morning with the release of clue three for our good fortune mystery. So those of you who are on the West Coast or overseas or whatever, you're going to have to kind of set your alarm to be in my time zone for a, a, a little bit. You can always take a nap later, but look for that to post before 9 a.m. Eastern time. Generally, I'm posting between 7.30 and 8. Sometimes if there's things that need a lot of detail and the post is longer, it may take me a little bit longer than that. But we'll put another 500 copies for you in the store. Um, what I'm working on, did you see me post these photos over social media the last week while my dad was napping on the couch at the cabin? I finally got my Halloween quilt top together. 
So this one is called The Spider and the Fly. It's being sewn way ahead for my next book down the pipeline, but it needs a border. And I thought I had enough of these hourglass units that are over here that you see in the corners of that block to do, but guess what? I never design the borders until the quilt center is done because I never really know if I'm designing, you know, by computer software or on graph paper or however I'm doing this, just really what the true scale of the quilt is and what it needs. So I wait until the top is together and then start playing with ideas for the border. And I was 10 hourglass units short. So this is where I was when I decided to pop on here for an impromptu quilt cam. I had cut my pairs of quarter square triangles from two inch strips with the essential triangle tool. And here I am gonna sew those and put those together. But I thought we could, we could have a fun time of it as well. So let me, before I even sew a stitch, I wanna know who's joining in with me tonight. So I'm gonna go straight to my email and I am going to pull up, let's see, primary, no, we want, all inboxes we want wait a minute how do i get to there's the little arrow i couldn't see it because of my picture quilt cam time okay quilters corner 54 hello there whoever you are just finished this one i think i'm blind <laughs> and that's diane in iowa oh my gosh diane that is gorgeous take a look at this Diane, that is just scrumptious, just beautiful. I'm just thrilled that you're here with me tonight. And this one is from Scott Flanagan, who's in Nebraska tonight. Scott, is it snowing where you are? He says, it took some time yesterday to do some fun sewing and designing. The large one is 15 by 29, and the small one is 7 and a half by 14 and a half. And his pictures, oh my gosh, I love that. So he's put up kind of like a partial trees trees through the window this would work i have no room in my house for a christmas tree right now because the living room <laughs> is full i have a very very small house to begin with small white folding table you know like those church banquet tables is now in the living room surrounded by chairs so that we can eat our meals in the living room because the dining room is mail order fulfillment center and the tables up on risers so it's really um quite a challenge how many of you participated when we did our i think it would be our on provence mystery that light is too bright for everybody isn't it i'm going to move it a little bit overside on provence did this we also did a leader ender challenge that used the hourglass unit so if you want to know how i cut these head over to the free patterns tab on the top of my blog and scroll down to hourglass leader and ender challenge it's going to show you a couple of different methods Quarter square triangle, I think people are, are more scared of them than they should be. I like to just cut them from strips, have them already right sides together, feed the pairs through, join two pairs together, a little bit of sliver trimming if needed, and voila, they're done. No drawing lines, no, no sliver trimming, going big to sliver trim down. And I've got enough here for 10. And I had a lot of fun pulling neutrals, and things that were, were black, black and neutral, that not necessarily Halloween fabric, but that would work in a black and orange scrap quilt. So every two pieces I put through here is one hourglass unit. So one half and one half together make a whole. So I didn't think this would take me very long to do this. This little machine, I think I sewed on it um, for our last quilt cam as well, or maybe I didn't sew at all because it was a joint venture with Holly Ann of String and Story. But this is the one that my son Jeff, it's a class 66, 1930s. He picked it up at his boss's garage. They were gonna they were gonna pitch it. It didn't have a um, a case or a cabinet, and he said, my mom will take that, and he brought it home. He was so pleased with himself that he picked me up at the airport brought me home and drug me right down here to show me what, what he brought home. It's kind of like when your cat catches the lizard, you know? All right. 
there are days when you just wait for the time when you can just sit and put some pieces easily through the machine. My email's going nuts. My wrist is uh, singing. So I just chain these through. I like to chain them with the dark one on the top so that when I press them and put them right sides together, they will go through the machine with the top seam allowance pointing up towards the dark, up towards the needle when the pairs go through as a whole. And uh, I always watch for that if I can have that seam go up towards the needle. It usually works on four patches and it works on these. Okay, let's see what we've got here. Scott, those are wonderful. I love those. Christy Jones says, quilt cam with Bonnie. Yay, I'm digging into the deep strips, <laughs> deep strip bins for this year's mystery. Love it because the more I use, the more I can buy. I like that. A Merry Christmas and Happy Holiday season. This weekend we were in the 80s. 80s. And today it's 60s in Houston. Winter in Houston, got to love it. Thanks again for all you could do for us. I couldn't do it without you. So that's from Christy. You know, we had, we were 63 today. It was weirdly warm. Can you tell? I'm in, in short sleeves here. It's one of those layer yourself. I usually have a denim shirt over my, over my t-shirt. It's my uniform of, of, of choice. Usually a quilty t-shirt. This one I got in um, West Virginia. But it was one of those days where it's so warm that the, denim shirt has stayed off and I almost felt like I need to put on the fan it's really humid it's been raining so weather is just really crazy Paula Jo David says my new pickup oh Paula Jo that's beautiful she just picked up the quilt from the long arm quilter and it's embedded photos so I can't get them any bigger but I'm going to scroll down to this one here and maybe biggie size it just a little bit it looks like beautiful pinwheels in a whoops where did it go? It opened up to the next email incoming. So it's, the photos are embedded, so I can't turn the camera or they're going to um, turn sideways themselves. See? Uh-huh. Paula Jo, you've got miles of binding to go, girl. That is beautiful. Patricia Young says, I got in. Good evening. My new book arrived today, and I got into Straits of Mackinac. Uh, uh, is that for... Um, Mackinac Island, you got into the Grand Hotel thing? Can't wait. Um, so she says it was a good day. That's wonderful. We started mailing books on Friday morning. So uh, my, my dad left Tuesday. We had Wednesday at home. Thursday books came. I started filling orders Thursday night. They shipped Friday. So hers went all the way to California by Monday. So they're coming. They're coming. Awesome. So this one says, you have inspired me from Anna G, who says, it's Anna Goff from Mississippi, took your classes in Jackson. I'm going to Jackson. I think I want to sew my mystery quilt on a Singer featherweight. Any advice? Places to avoid buying one. I am thinking eBay is a no-no. So she says, so glad to see you and have a wonderful Merry Christmas. Buying featherweights. It would be like buying a car without trying it out first because even though they all look the same, they have their own little different personalities. Um, I have found that vintage machines can have a couple of different issues and the body might look great, but if the, the motor hasn't been used a lot or hasn't been lubricated or whatever, it can run slow. So you've got this beautiful machine that you've paid primo dollars for, but it's got the slows and it's kind of sluggish. Um, part of that problem can also be the foot pedal. The foot pedal has a little rheostat inside and that can be adjusted to make it so faster or slower, but it's old. If it's a vintage foot pedal, it's going to be a little bit old and it can also have the slows. So I wouldn't want to buy a featherweight that I didn't at least see how it ran first. So I would check locally, maybe Craigslist, maybe um, if your quilt shop has the, the, a card or something from somebody, ask around your quilters at the Quilter Skill. There might be somebody who has a featherweight that just, just isn't using it. They'd like to sell it. So that way you can see it first. Um, there are very reputable um, sellers on eBay. That said, there's also some that have no clue how to pack a machine before shipping it. So my experience has been, after a numerous uh, broken machines, 
I just don't risk it. I don't, I don't like to have machines shipped to me unless I know who's doing the shipping and, and, the, and the person who's doing the shipping. So that said, I love my vintage machines. I don't want to sew on anything else. So good luck. Hope you find that Merry Christmas featherweight and that you'll be sewing your mystery on it soon. This one's coming from a phone number. It's Marcia in Louisville. And she's doing string piecing with Christmas fabrics. That looks just awesome. I've got a string pieced Christmas table runner on my white folding table in my living room that, that Karen, my friend Karen sent me. And it's the first Christmas decoration out this year. I unwrapped it, stuck it right on the white table. Looks better already, those white hollow core tables. These are beautiful. Great job. All right, let's get some of these pieces through. I'm antsy. As soon as I get these hourglass units made, I can start putting the borders on this Halloween quilt. I was hoping that it was going to be one that was going to go to Quilt Maker in next year's issues, but my quilting machine is having some big severe problems, which means I will likely miss the deadline that things would need to be there for the September, October issue. So unless I send it out and pay to have somebody quilt it, it's not going to get quilted in time. I just had a blast pulling through these fabrics. I'm also watching to be sure I don't run out of bobbin. Now there's more than one way to do a holiday quilt, whether it's a, a red, white, and blue for 4th of July, or orange and black for Halloween, or green and, and red for Christmas. Not all the fabrics have to be theme fabrics. In this one, I've got several that are Halloween, and there's cute little skulls and spider webs and spiders and, and different things. But then you can also throw in stuff that are just within that color family that don't have to be a specific Halloween theme fabric. And in fact, I think it looks a little bit better if not every single fabric in the quilt is screaming novelty, 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 novelty. You know what I mean? You can still keep the, the color theme going and have more interesting things to look at if all of the fabrics in a Halloween quilt are not strictly Halloween by themselves. And if I send these all through the machine with the dark ones on the top, they're very easy to take the whole length of chain piecing, put it on my ironing board, all lined out, press everything to the dark, and then come through and snip between the pieces. That way they're all laying the same way and they're very easy for me to stack them up all uniform. If I were to cut them all apart with the thread cutter thing first, it actually causes more work. So press first, cut second. Okay, we're down to the last four here. I'm on a roll guys, I'm not stopping. Jeff and I are able to sign, seal, and ship about 150 books a day, 150 orders, if we're working together. If I don't have him help me, it's about 100. And um, I promised myself that I would not work sun up to bedtime, that I would be done with whatever I was doing up there by 8 o'clock and give myself two hours of machine time before going to bed because you've just got to turn your brain off and you've got to just do something that feels a little bit creative so the other things that I've been doing this week let's see where are they okay I started out with these and this was was this Saturday night or Friday Friday night I think it had to be Friday night so I made the strip sets Friday night. And then Saturday, I cut the strip sets into the three units. And Saturday night, 
I, I was able to assemble all of these nine patches because the sections were already made. Just like when working on our mystery, if you break it down into smaller parts, you're going to be able to make greater progress without feeling overwhelmed. If somebody said, sit down and make 56 nine patches, well, I would not be able to do that in one day or one evening. It just would be too overwhelming. But by breaking it down, just like the way we're doing our mystery, I was able to get these done. And then I moved on to the next thing. This was last night. I cut all of these half square triangles. I sewed all of these half square triangles. I pressed and removed all the dog ears on all of these half square triangles. Now these are not for this year's mystery. This is a whole nother project that I'm wanting to make um, a quilt from a previous Addicted to Scraps column block. This block has been calling to me for a long time. So I just thought I would pull out the re recycled fabrics and then just do random reds and whatever to get these, these blocks together. So when I'm done getting the borders on this Halloween quilt, I'll be back to working on this. Okay. You guys, I was freezing in here. This is the basement, so I have the heater on now. The heater's making me sweat, but I can't leave the computer <laughs> to go turn the heater off. Michelle says, yay, a surprise quilt cam. This is Michelle in Missouri, and she says, I'm quilting on my moth in the window from your class in Iowa, all caught up on good fortune and waiting for my copy of String Frenzy. I know I mailed it, Michelle. I know I did. My hubby has strict orders to watch the mail and don't let anything happen to my book. And here she is quilting away on her moth in the window. Oh, that's looking good. I see lots of feathers and swirlies in that quilting. So there's her moth in the window. See what I mean? What happened? What happened? So that's from Pat Kilmaine who says, every time I see your camera move, I feel like we're having another aftershock. She's up in Alaska. Alaska people, I hope you're okay. She says, it's just your machine making it move slightly but we're all very sensitive move to sensitive to movement right now. So I have my machine over here. The laptop is on top of another little pedestal table. And on top of the pedestal table is a project box and then the laptop to get it up high enough for this so you can see what I'm doing at the table. But the, the camera and the laptop are not even touching this sewing table. I guess I'm just really vibrating um, with this machine. Okay, so let's see who we are here. Yay, how cool. We've got Christy from Army Brat Quilts, and she says, I started this quilt in 2014 when my mom took off on a cross-country road trip. It's almost done. My goal is to finish it by Christmas, long-armed and bound. I know that quilt is 100 inches square. That's 400 inches of binding. I hope you're ready. She says, thanks to lots of new Instagram friends for helping me with some variety for the last few dozen blocks. Oh, these are looking great. So she's ready to assemble. This is her per Perky Omen Daydreams. It's set like a Perky Omen Valley 9 patch. If you're familiar with Amish and Mennonite quilts, it's usually shaded um, like a, a nine patch, but this is actually a shaded 25 patch, but it still is able to um, give you that feel. You can twist and turn these any number of log cabin layouts. Anyway, um, the pattern is in my book, Scraps and Shirt Tails. There's 400 blocks, 400 blocks in that quilt. So when she says the last couple of dozen, it really is getting close to the finish. Those are great, Christy. I love the variety. Beautiful. Anna Braun says, antique quilt. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Not sure if the picture came through, so I'm descending. So I'm descending this. <laughs> so I'm sending this. Found this quilt at a barn sale for $25. She has bumps and bruises, but I will love her. And the picture's upside down, but that's how butterflies fly. Well, goodness sakes. If I move the camera or the move the phone, it just try to biggie size it wants to go back so there's her butterfly appliques looks like 1930s ish fabrics those are cute love that Karen says thankful in her subject line I've been following but have not had time to dig in and start good fortune yet I want to send greetings from far northeast Oregon and our group of Rocky Ridge quilters Thanks for all you share and all the beauty you help us create. Blessed holiday season. And that's Karen Fulbright. 
All righty. So we are going to pull these out of here. And you know what I don't have? I don't have a leader ender here. This is really bad. But I do have a half square triangle on the floor that didn't get pressed. No, I'm not going to use that as leader ender. It's a good one. That's a good one. Okay. We need a piece of junk. Okay. This is me for not being prepared because my current leader and under project is up at the cabin. And I won't be back up there until probably Christmas time. Okay. So we've got these. Ta-da. And I will press those to the dark. But what I was talking about is t take your whole chain, and I usually cut the chain into ironing board lengths. You can just lay it on your ironing board and cut it off at the end. Usually the other end goes over my shoulder so that I can keep it off the floor and I don't have to bend over and pick it up. But once these are all laid out on the ironing board, it's really easy to come along, open this up, and with the tip of the iron, just press where the seam is. You don't need to push the whole triangle over. You just want a flat seam. So I usually use my fingers to get it started, and then the iron just sets on that one while I open up the next one, and then the iron just sets down on that one. But I use my fingers to make sure that that fabric is pushed all the way over before I do it. Then I'll just have some dog ears to remove right here. Just a few little dog ears. Not bad. I can't wait to get this border on this quilt. All right, I know this was an impromptu quilt cam, and it's not going to last the full time, but I do want to um, catch a couple of the um, emails that have come in. This one is from Sue Rickman, and I recognize your name, Sue. Your order went out today also. She said, just finished Papa's pickup, applique quilted wall hanging for the new little farmer across the road from me. So excited to catch quilt cam tonight, and she's starting on clue number two. Oh, isn't that cute? Oh, that is adorable. I love the plaid running boards. Look at that. Cute. The little farmer across the street. You're going to be a good neighbor. I have to tell myself, go away from the face. It's opposite of what I'm, what I'm seeing on my side. That is beautiful. Wonderful. Papa's pickup. Karen Brule says, yay, quilt cam. What a surprise. Thank you. I'm sitting in my car spinning seams. <laughs> That, that's perfect, Karen. That's perfect. You got a lot of seams to spin. Only quilters would understand that. She says, we'll press those and the half square triangles when I get home. Hoping there will be string blocks in this mystery. That would tie in well with the release of String Frenzy. Thanks for all you do. Have a wonderful holiday. You too. We've got all, all, several clues to be released before Christmas even arrives. So there's a... a a lot of opportunity for some really fun stuff with this mystery. I'm excited about it. My girlfriend Mona is even joining in and people have, there's a little side conversation when I show, shared Mona's units um, on Facebook. Is that last night or the day before? I don't even had to be last night. Anyway, she um, is, has joined in and this little conversation was, do you think Mona knows where the mystery, what the mystery is? I don't know. Does Mona have a phone number? Does anybody have her email address? We should ask Mona. I wonder if she can be bribed, <laughs> bribed with fabric to tell us what the mystery looks like. And no, she doesn't know. She doesn't know. It's, it's a mystery for her too. So um, we're, we're having a really good time. The other thing folks have begged for, and I'm happy to say that yes, this actually happened over Thanksgiving. Will we see the reveal with your dad holding and you holding the quilt? Yes, you will. We made sure that we got photos. The weather was most uncooperative that whole week, but we found um, a, an opportunity to get some photos done. I won't tell you where they're going to be um, taken, but I think that you're going to going to like it. And it means a lot to me to have my dad in the reveal photos with me. So, all right, what are we doing here? I don't want to take all this time and turn my back towards you and, and hit the iron over here. So I'm going to come over here to Sue Marshall, who says, Posey Happy, Hershey class quilt coming along. 
So she is making her garden party in reds and whites. Look at that. That's garden party from the Addicted to Scraps book. Did you guys know that I dropped all of the prices on all my previous titles? $19.99 each. If there's a copy of anything that you've been wanting that you haven't picked up yet, you won't find them less expensive than this. This is the lowest I will ever offer them, and you get a signed copy. So hit up my website for that. I love the yellow centers in those. Those are great, Sue. Carolee says, this was a very big challenge trying to meet each corner of the parallelograms. Oh, they're wonderful. So she's doing a tumbling block quilt. Um, now, if I turn this sideways, what will it do? Oh, good. You can see it. So she's doing her tumbling blocks layout there. And they are tricky. There's a lot of points to match and not a lot of seams that nest when you put things that are not um, 45 degree angles together. So that means a lot of pinning. Pins are your friend. That is beautiful. I love the black. Okay. So this one says, On Ringo Lake from Maida. Here's my On Ringo Lake quilt with its blue ribbon from this year's fair. Thanks for a great pattern. That's from Maida Delaney. Oh, I love your colors. Waiting for it to come in full size here. And I think this is one I can also turn sideways for you. There she's got her on Ringo Lake. Can we biggie it just a little bit? Can it take up more space? There we go. Beautiful colors. I just love seeing what you're working on. Um, for my plans for, for the holidays, besides finishing up this couple of things, I want to get this Halloween top together. I want to get started on this other project. I've got a couple of things on the design wall at the cabin. I would love to be able to sit and do more hand quilting with my feet up and just enjoy the season. And that will happen as soon as, as soon as, see if I go in that room, if I go in the living room, I have to look at those cases of books and the white table that's in my living room. So that's not my happy space right now. I want to be down here. But I would love to just enjoy um, the hand stitching time and the quiet of the season and, and have the Christmas movies on and the Christmas music playing and maybe a candle burning and something yummy in the crock pot. And that is my idea of a fabulous holiday. Now, if you are just joining in with us here, one of the things I mentioned at the beginning was today is our Mystery Monday link up day for part two, although you can share any progress on the mystery that you're, you're working on um, wherever you are, just share where you are. And you'll find that on my blog at quiltville.blogspot.com. You'll find it in today's post. Click the title of the post and it'll take you to the full post itself because the, the main page just has a little synopsis so that you get a little gist and then you can click to which one you want. Follow the information on how to link up. You can use a Google Plus photo. You can use an Instagram if your Instagram is set to public only. If you have a private Instagram, don't link because none of us can see it. So that won't stay. You can link to a Pinterest photo. If you upload your photo to a Pinterest folder on your Pinterest account, just be sure that you also copy the address of today's post from my blog and post that in the comment to your Instagram post or your Pinterest post. It needs a link back so that somebody who's viewing, they click the link on the linky, they go to see you at your Pinterest or your Instagram. There needs to be a direct link to get them back to where they where they started. So um, we're trying to have that be a two-way street, not a one-way dead end. Okay, so be sure you do that. Um, Facebook, unfortunately, doesn't work because of the privacy settings. So we can't link to a Facebook, but you can also li link to a Flickr post. Um, so just follow the directions there. I love to see what you're sharing. We are also um, following the hashtags. This is this is the <laughs> this is a sick symbol the symbol for a hashtag, but you can't do it can't do it this way too. Um, Quiltville mystery. Okay. No year. Don't put a year on it. Just Quiltville Mystery and Good Fortune Quilt. One word. Again, no year. If you put a year on it, it makes it too hard um, to find because this mystery crosses from 18 into 19 
So it won't be two separate things. So it's just best to leave the year off. Just good fortune quilt and Quiltville mystery. Well, everybody, this has been a really fun, quick visit. I promise that we will do this again soon. I have felt really out of the loop since um, my brother passed away in September. It's just been all that I could do to put one foot in front of the other on, on some days. And then we throw in the, the teaching travel and the, the book being published and now the mail order frenzy and everything else that's going on. And my dad here for the holidays, there just hasn't been time to do anything. And I know that your life is feeling pretty crazy too. So even if we end up with a short hello, a very short quilt camp, I promise to, to check in with you more often um, tomorrow. I have a very, very special giveaway happening on the blog. So you'll want to check that out too. Um, be watching for that post. If you are not getting my Facebook um, in your newsfeed as often as you think, if you've missed something, you know I'm posting several times a day, come to the page directly. In fact, you can set yourself up on your cell phone, on your tablet, wherever it is, a bookmark directly to my Quiltville Facebook page. And if you use that as your entry point for, for Facebook, you can navigate to your own newsfeed from there, but you won't miss anything. So if ever you feel like I haven't heard anything from her, come stop on by. It's all there. I promise I'm not going anywhere. Uh, I want to wish everybody a good night. And again, if it's still early where you are, you got some pressing to do. This is where I'm going to be in, in just a few minutes. I will catch you later. Have a wonderful evening, everybody. I'm glad we got a chance just to say hey and catch up a bit. We'll catch you next time on Quilt Camp. Bye, everybody.